Go back into this, let's do this, let's introduce our players to the top right hand side, our pink Protoss player is going to be from Invasion Esports. Let's see if you're cheering on the Halston. Let's down to the bottom left hand side, our red Zerg player is going to be Bly. So as we set up into game number one of this best of three, Bly is already starting to send his drone out onto the map. It's going to happen once again, he's going to go proxy hatchet, unless he's going to take a gold base as his first base, um, which is somewhat of a possibility. What's he waiting for? I guess he's waiting for this probe to pass by. Uh, that's kind of smart. Waiting for the probe to pass by as he comes in, he's going to take the gold hatchet. Okay then, so he's going to expand onto the gold. Bly already off to the classic sort of Bly-esque start here, so it's not a proxy hatchery, but it is a uh, something that's a little bit out there. Hearts actually the first thing he's going to check. As his opponent is going for a base, or as whether he's going for a base on the gold. So Harston sees this very early on. This is actually nice seeing this so early from Harston. He could respond to this. I mean, he's actually got a gateway at the front, so if he wanted to, like, Corona I don't know if Corona Bristar has that would work and actually do enough here, but, you know, he's got a gateway very far forward, so if he does want to try and do something, he will, I imagine, just uh, out on a Nexus for now, though. But something like, I don't know, like, I don't know how well kind of this gold base works, because something like Adept Attacks and so on, are surely going to be very effective against the gold base, which is just so far away from the main base of the Protoss player, of the Zerg player. So, it's kind of interesting. I don't really feel as though it's the sort of thing which should work for Bly, but I'm sure he's done it in practice. I'm sure it's worked for him before, otherwise he wouldn't be using it now in one of the more important qualifiers of the year. I don't know where Bly stands on WCS points, of course. Right at the start of the year in the first WCS tournament, DreamHack Leipzig, he got pretty far. He uh, got to the uh, finals, of course. But of course, since then, yeah, he's been a little bit up and down, you know, he's not been always on the very top, so... I don't think he's super high in the WCS point rankings. I think the issue for Bly is that he missed out on a few of the championships. Um, the few of the championships have been very difficult to get into, and he did struggle a little bit to get into some of those, so... I think that's probably where Bly is kind of lost out or kind of stay near the top in terms of WCS points. As you can see, did see Harson just going to open up the Twilight Council here? Let's see then, so... Wow, Euphemo is right near the top, that's crazy. If Euphemo qualifies for Copa America, for the uh, for this event, that'd be ridiculous for him because he'd be very close to getting into the top 8 or so. And that top eight also has um, three people already qualified, right? So it's like five people. Wait, so yeah, it's it's this. You have to be top five on points, right, or something? Just sorry, I was looking for Bly. Bly's twenty first. So he's actually way out of BlizzCon contention. But um, for someone like you, Thermal, it's actually a very important event for him. Um, moving forwards, very very important event if he qualifies for this. You can see some Zerglings working their way through these rocks over to the uh, left hand side and Depp just having a little bit of a look around. Not seeing too much here just yet as we're going to see Lingus coming in once again. So, just going to continue working his way through this. Obviously Bly's starting to get a bit aggressive now. Hearthstone, he's building his two extra gates. He's going for this Resonating Glaze opening. So, it's a build order we've seen plenty of times in the past. Mothership Core now out. Going to start moving actually to this top left side it seems. To try and deny Zerglings from breaking through here but maybe just a little bit too late. As these Zerglings have already taken a good chunk of health off of all of these rocks, so already down to only 500 health remaining. These rocks are uh, sort of dead. <laughs> Membership Corticals are three Zerglings in the process of trying to defend this, but rocks are down and now Bly can back away. Actually, a fourth Zergling not quite going down there in the end, I thought it was. So Hostum starts warping Adepts, and again, I sort of feel as though this gold base is very vulnerable, but um, just because of the ability of the Adepts to jump from this gold base to over here quite quickly and so on. But maybe not, I mean, I guess just speedlings. It'll be kind of interesting. Bly's actually stopped making workers though, so either way, he's going to start going into roaches, and Bly's going to start taking us into a very aggressive setup now in the next few moments. So, you will see these Zergans continue to move around from Bly. And I'm just going to be seeing these Adepts starting to shade out onto the map. So, Adepts shading out onto the map here, going to be moving forwards and towards the center. Zergling's going to come across and. Uh, well, they're going to try and see what they can get up to. They run on in here. I'm going to try and take down another couple of gates and, well, the pylon as well. Overcharge comes down, though, to help push those away. 
So this is going to take some heavy damage. Hoss comes back to where he's uh, seen these roaches, so he sort of realizes how aggressive his opponent is being. Immediately you see some sentries warped in. I think that the uh, robot facility will make an immortal almost immediately here to help him defend against these incoming roaches. As Hearthstone, does he really want to kind of come down the ramp and fight this? Oh, he force heals those roaches in. I guess he just has the adept numbers to fight this, which just sort of makes sense. But then more roaches coming in. The Zerglings will sort of come in soon here as well. It's a very ballsy move by Hearthstone, who at the same time now has Zerglings in towards his mineral line. All of a sudden, this is not looking so great for Hearthstone. Maybe it would have been better off playing a little bit more conservatively with these units, as we do see his third base. I mean, can he protect that? Mothership Core will sort of come into position. Sex energy until he has an overcharge available. The pylons are already going down. First Immortal is about to pop, and as Hossum continues to warp in, some more units are trying to come in and fight this, but again, it's just so much for our uh, Zerg player right now. As we're going to be seeing that Immortal, though, will change a lot here. The Armored, uh, the armored um, Roach is, of course, going down quickly, and we actually see a Sentry being picked off as it warps in. Third base is still currently alive. Membership Core coming in once again, there's some Immortal still looking for a way to fight. I actually don't think Hossum has enough here. I think just moving down the ramp initially was just a little bit too bold, and he lost a bit too much. When just letting his units mass up a little bit more might have been the better answer. He's not dead yet, but he will lose the third base, I think. Which means he has to play now very defensively. He's actually just going to type out GG anyway. Losing the third base, he thinks it's just too much lost. As we're going to be seeing the... Um... Let's go in and introduce our players. So the bottom left-hand side, we're going to be having our pink Protoss player from Invasion Esports. Let's see it, guys, if you're cheering on Harston. And down to the bottom right, our red Zerg player is going to be Bly. So, probably going to come across the map here. It's just going to be a gateway opening as Bly is going to go for a proxy hatchery. So, very early in this game, Bly is um, just going to be moving this uh, drone across to the left hand side. And we'll be putting up a hatchery on the other side of the map. So, we saw this against Sokke earlier. We saw Sokke defend it once, lose to it once. On this map, he did indeed lose to it. So, the thing is here from Harstam, he comes in, he actually sees two drones pulled to kind of take an expansion, but he doesn't see the expansion taken uh, from either of these. So, he has to come into the main base, and now he's going to see the gas, and now he's going to see the pool, and he's going to go back down, he's still going to see no hatchery. And so Harstam should very early, very quickly in this game, realize that Bly has got a hatchery out on the map. He's going to come straight down here, spots it straight away. What's his response going to be? There's a few ways he can do this. He could pull Pulwerker. I mean, it's quite a distance to Pulwerker. He's just going to call Corona Boost and a Zealot adds on a full wall here. Oh, I kind of like the Zealot idea. I wonder if he pulls Workers as well, though, still, to make sure he gets rid of it. Going to be interesting as we um, do see these few drones just going to be uh, moving out. Getting ready to make them spine calls, of course, as we've seen previously. This probe coming back as well. First Zealot out, so we're going to start swiping away. And this again is interesting because these uh, the Zealot can actually add a lot of damage onto this right now. So the Zealot is going to start uh, swiping away and see how low this hatchery ends up getting before kind of units come in to help. Sixlings being made on the other side of the map currently. Second Zealot on the way out. This hatchery is already going down to what, like two thirds of its health? And as we see in this uh, Zealot continue to swipe away, spine crawlers will start to come up over here. And Harsum just says, well, you know what, I'm not going to let that happen. Immediately comes in, cancels the first spine crawler. that drone goes up the ramp, and the Zells will go back onto the hatchery for now. It's, uh, it's interesting, you can see these two drones trying to come down and make small calls as well. There's a couple of Zerglings coming out. The thing is, when there's already two Zealots out, these Zerglings aren't going to trade very well at all. And now two Adepts are also going to be coming in in a moment. As we do see a uh, spine crawler does get up towards the upper side. Now, Mothership Core going to come down here, though. And Harsum has to be careful, it's at this point where he actually has to be very cautious that he doesn't let his units get surrounded or anything, that he does trade correctly. And as now he's playing a very dicey game, this is really going to come down to control. He's going to start pulling back, he has bought himself a lot of time in terms of, uh, you know, delaying these, uh, spine calls from coming up here. As we see these Zealots going to fight the Adepts as well, puts a lot of power onto this. One of these spines is going to be targeted down, another Adept coming in. This is three Adepts now, as these two Zealots are going to force the cancel on that. This drone is not going to get in. Oh, he does manage to stop building the spine crawler again. Mothership Core and the Queen does go the way of the Mothership Core there. Queen doesn't survive as one spine crawler does come up to the top side. We will see the spine to the south probably going down again. This time the drone should die. So Mothership Core will be left up here to continue working on the spines. The thing is, if these spines move forwards now, you can already see that these Adepts, the Zealot, they're in just such a good position to kind of take, you know, do so much damage to the spine crawler before it can you know, get forward in an aggressive position. To kind of really do anything, and Bly 
He's just not doing what he needs to do. There come them spank balls moving forwards. No pile onto the right hand side here, so it's a good just place to kind of siege up these uh, spines we're going to be seeing. Well, I mean, just going to move forwards here. Honestly, there's just so much damage going to be put out onto them. The spines are going to go down very quickly, I feel. The Lings will commit forwards to try and buy some time. At this point, the Adepts might just keep on fighting just because these spines are so low. There's one going down, but one that's a bit further back isn't a threat anyway, so it doesn't matter that he doesn't get rid of that just yet. As we'll see, those Adepts still just position just near to the front queen gonna be trying to poke away wherever possible mothership court taking some more damage mothership court might go down in fact it will go down past him by uh, stopping by uh, pulling that back for a moment or two there for some reason adepts gonna move forward the lings are gonna try and jump in towards the base but i mean there's just so many adepts here obviously they don't have glaives or anything but they're still trading pretty well and they're getting into a choke point now a better choke point uh, actually that's a few of the lings through there so a little bit of a mistake perhaps as we're gonna be seeing lings a few of them will go up in towards the main base he will shade up a queen and a spine crawl at the front, still doing some damage. And as we see the probes being pulled, I think these adepts should just cancel and uh, just go back to the low ground. I mean, these probes in the main base have dealt with this, so go back to the low ground to help against this. And, and that spine crawl, it's really frustrating me that's on such a low health, and yet it's still here uh, having an impact on the game. No membership call being rebuilt just yet from Hall, so hopefully that's not going to be something that comes back to bite him. Again, sending everything up in towards the main base to protect against this. Would have been better just send the adepts up and then shade back down, perhaps. But either way, we are. I mean, the thing is, he's actually going to start losing this kind of front wall here. This uh, gateway is about to go down. He has got warp gate finished, but he's not going to get warp in on this right hand side gateway in time. This other gateway will be able to warp in, but now less of a wall available. Is there only one gateway? Okay, there's two gateways in the main base, too. So he's got plenty of warp ins available, actually. He's got a force field available, too. Spine crawlers continue to mass up, though. Halston doesn't have any way to fight against these spine crawlers. He doesn't have the immortals coming in or anything. Was Cybercore going to go down is something which we talked about about Sokke, where he lost this game maybe because he needed to build his spine or rebuild his, uh, you know, warp gate, his cybernetics core so much sooner than he actually did. As you're going to see now, this overcharge is still a possibility. He does overcharge now. Spine to the left hand side, I think it's something he has to try and fight against to some extent. I mean, he has to just get rid of this. Queens will transfuse for a little while. He has enough views to keep on fighting it though. A nice force field on the ramp to stop the Zerglings getting by. Harstom is still 10 workers ahead in this game. As we're going to be seeing these screens continue to fight. This spine is going to move further up this ramp. I don't know. This spine over here is very low on health. Transfused now, though. As we do see the Lynx trying to dart on in again. One more sentry warp in would be really nice just to be able to... Maybe even just a sentry on the high ground to make sure you can actually always have a force field able to be saved in case those Lynx try and jump on through. As now we see Hossum taking an awkward fight where he's actually fighting against a lot of Lynx with the spine crawlers as well. Transfuse comes down, the spines begin to die, a few lings into the main base, the adepts will cancel their shade to keep fighting at the front, pros will just come down to mine from the natural instead for a little while. I think Harsom's held this off this time, I think this is going to be the defense that he needs, because now the Zerglings will eventually get dealt with in the main, and Harsom still finds himself up 8 workers, and just in a very good position in general. I mean, he can slowly push out against this base, there's only really queens and lings now, and he's got plenty of units, I think, to deal with that. If you could deal with those lings and the spine cores before, I think you can deal with the rest of this now, as we're going to be seeing. A couple more sentries warping, a couple of force fields to help. Again, just defend, uh, chop up some units here and there, kind of chop up the armies of his opponent. It's going to be an important feature as well as the force field just come down. You're going to see those Zergans continue to take a bit more damage. Sentry also uh, going down there to the side, as we see those couple of lings going to fall. And we are going to be seeing more lings just on the way out, a couple more probes being made. It's going to be seeing a sentry. And an adept being warped in. Zalat's adept sentries moving forward here right now. And we are just going to be seeing the uh, hatchery in the front just being targeted once again. So hatchery still being targeted. But you get rid of the hatch, I mean, there's some of the production that goes down from Bly, of course, and that does hurt for him. Because the last thing he wants is to lose a lot of this production. It's one of these games which is sort of over. Bly still trying to stay in this nice couple of forces just to help. You can just see that the number of units here is just way too great for our Protoss player. And that Bly just doesn't have anything left at all. Trying to build another spine core towards the back here. A few more Lings run in. But they just keep on going down. And Harstam is going to be taking game number two. Tying up this series. One game apiece. This is to Bly's aggressive roach push in game one. Takes down Bly's proxy hatch in game two. What is game number three going to bring our way as we see? A spine core is still building. Um, so has to get rid of that. Okay, there we go. Bad GG's anyway. So it does pop to death. And we are going to be going into a game of three here between Bly and players in just a moment. Alright, so as we go into this, it is 1-1 between Bly and Harston. To the bottom right-hand side, our red Zerg player is going to be Bly from Team Expert now. 
And to the top left hand side, our pink Protoss player is going to be Invasion Esports Harston. As we set on up into game number three of this best of three series. Let's wait and see what's going to happen. So, we're going to be uh, seeing Probe just coming across here early. I mean, when you're playing against Blan, he's gone for a proxy gold base one game and a proxy hatchery the next to attack you. Then, um, you know, you may as well scout early in the game. And I think Carlson figured this out very early on last time around anyways. Um, he figured that out quite quickly. And so here we are, just scouting out once again early in the game. He will see Hatch Gas Pool this time, though, so a bit more of a standard opening. Awesome, still just has to be prepared against potential aggression from his opponent, though, as this probe pulls away. Back down towards this south side. So, probe pulling back away. We do see a uh, gateway going to be coming up over here, and Halston just going to be expanding. Obviously, if I'm seeing a hatch gas pool, he can play a um, he can play a little bit kind of a uh, more standard build order himself. Doesn't have to add on the second gateway super fast. Doesn't have to corner boost out a zealot. Just plays his standard build order for now, and we'll see what that's going to be here on King Sejong Station. It's a map where you can be playing Twilight Council, Resident Inglaves. It's a map where you can go Stargate if you want to as well. Map where you can, if you want to, although very rarely we see it, just see a robo facility and a warp prison based opening to harass around the map. There's a lot of different possibilities here from Hostum in the start of this, so we'll wait and see exactly what's going to be from him from Bly. Well, obviously, he can be very aggressive himself too. We'll see how much gas he mines. He's actually going to pull out at 100, so he's just going to go for link speed here initially. Nothing too ridiculous, so Bly is going to be building in towards free bases nice and early on. Still possible that he gets aggressive at some point. We'll have to wait and see when. As we do just see this probe, just moving backwards and forwards here. A couple of lings and a drone going in towards this third base as well. And I'm going to see those couple of lings just moving forwards. Like hatchery going down on the third. And Hawstom still just kind of looping around. So Hawstom just looping around with this probe. And those couple of zerglings just again chasing, 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 looking to see what he can get up to. I'm going to see if you can just shut that down. Obviously, he doesn't want to uh, let the probe stick around for too long. As we are going to be seeing the uh, Stargate being added on right now. So, Stargate being added on. Going to be seeing this uh, going in towards a... Well, that's our opening decided here from Harsom. So, we are talking about it a little bit beforehand. But now we know it is just going to be the Stargate place. So, we'll see. I mean, this still remains a question. Is it going to be Oracle or is it going to be Phoenix? And um, we'll be figuring that out in just a moment. It's going to be an Oracle. I like the Oracle player. I feel as though I like Oracles more than Phoenix because it feels as though you need a lot of Phoenix to get something done. Uh, but then you need Oracles. You know, Oracles can... You, you only need one, really, to get something done. But you actually generally go for two. And they can be very effective. And it's a very good way to open Stargate, create map control, get some worker kills, force some spores, and then follow up very nicely afterwards into kind of a nice quick follow-up with whatever you want, whether it is that Forge, Robo, Twilight, maybe all three even. That actually generally is what we see. Uh, while you take a third base. So Blight does get in with a single Zergle and he does scout the Stargate, so he immediately does start up some Spore Crawlers, meaning that he should be fairly well prepared against this. Uh, you know, he shouldn't take, like, a load of damage from the first Oracle. It shouldn't be like, oh my god, I'm killing, like, all your mineral, you know, entire mineral line or anything like that. Uh, so just going to be seeing the, uh... Oracle just poking forwards here. Having a little bit of a look to see what's going on. And just backing away once again. So Oracle just uh, moving around. Still looking to see what's going on, what is happening. Going to be actually continuing to come down to the south side here. Another Oracle is out. I mean, two Oracles is the standard because two Oracles do one shot a worker, which means you can come in and kill a lot of workers very quickly without taking too much uh, damage on the Oracle. Uh, was that a revelation? I believe it was just onto a couple of queens, the hatchery. May as well do that, as you have to wait now for the shields to regen a little bit on the Oracle. So actually has some energy to pull our beam with and to kill off some workers. As we'll see those uh, Lings just backing away up towards the upper side. So Lings just kind of, uh, not backing away, are actually going to go attack. Interesting that he commits so far forwards with all these Lings because there's a Mothership Core Depths. I mean, he must know that. And these Oracles are very good against Zerglings as well. You're going to see them coming in and... I mean, they will just activate their Pulsar Beam, because guess what? He will pick off quite a few of these. Actually, one of these Oracles doesn't have Pulsar Beam activated, so he could have picked off a few more. 
unfortunately is not going to be the case as this group of lings just back away to the bottom right hand side. And as we're going to be seeing these lings, let's pull them back up towards the top side. Oracle is going to be moving over to the right here. So Oracle's moving over to the right hand side. We're going to see what's going to be going on. Overcharge does get popped. I'm glad it's going to be backing away a little bit here. Zealot's adept sentry and a stalker. Just going to be sitting on the ramp. And again, those oracles just going to be coming in here, continuing to try and get a bit of damage done. Just here and there, just, you know, in, out. Just looking to see what he can get done. Blink is on the way up. For, uh, plus one is on the way up as well. As we're going to be seeing the stalker just uh, targeting down the overlord. So, stalker targeting down this overlord right now. Obviously, Overlord just coming in to scout, see what's going on. It's a very standard game, really. Blink on the way up, going to go into sort of like a Blink Stalker Sentry Immortal sort of thing for a little while. We don't actually see Immortal Productions just yet. We see Harstam still just building up Observers. We're going to see those Zerglings starting to work away through those back rocks, and Revelation does come down. And those two uh, Oracles, again, just looking to see what else they can get up to. We're just going to be seeing those Zerglings just... Uh, Back and away, so again, just a couple of oracles continue to move around here. A couple more sentries get warped in, plus one coming up on this forge, and we also see that blink just about 60 to 70 percent of the way done. Fourth base coming down, fifth base even to the left hand side from Blah. He is just building up into himself, kind of a bling ravager, bane style. We've been seeing a lot more of this lately, very aggressive, swarmy sort of play style. We see a spire on the way up as well, so a spire on the way up right now. From Bly means that he's going to be able to get in towards those middleisks as a switch here a little bit later on. If that's what he wants to go for, I mean, don't imagine what else it's going to be. It's not like you're just going to be uh, seeing any corruptors or anything as we do see that uh, cannon. It's working its way through the uh, few zirglings here on the third base. So, just going to be seeing the lings continue to drop down. We are going to see a couple of revelations, uh, sorry, a couple of orcs coming in. We'll target down those ravagers. So, ravagers being targeted down here. Taking quite a bit of damage as the oracles do end up backing away. A few cross bars came down, but they didn't land on anything. As we do now see, there was a couple of stalkers just moving around. Resonant Glaive starting on a plus two as well, but there's the first mutilus coming into play now. He does have blink. Question becomes, I mean, Hossum, he hasn't seen the spire yet, right? So that's unfortunate because it means he hasn't been able to begin preparing. If he'd seen this, He'd have gone up to at least five or so Phoenix already and just, you know, maybe not already, but he'd be on his way to like five or so Phoenix to help him kind of fight against this and reduce these Zerglings. Position themselves to the upper right hand side. Revelation, sorry, not Revelation. Keep calling these uh, Grosser Bars Revelations for some reason. It's because the Oracles always seem to be nearby when I see them. Uh, my bad. Uh, we can see a few Bane starting to morph in. Bane Speed did finish up some time ago now, so. Bane Speed in the game, again, it's a very hard composition to fight against. You know, it really does require good force fields and just good Kamaiko in general. This is interesting because we do see here, I mean, Harstam sees this army moving up the left-hand side. He's going to see all those Balins morphing in, so he knows exactly what's coming in. I'm just going to be seeing the Stalkers moving on over to the left-hand side here, just getting ready to try and defend against this. A few meters are going to go to the right at the same time. But we have to be careful, though, because he's right underneath this army for now, and actually Harstam, if he sees it, could just blink underneath. And that's going to be one or two meters going down at least, so a couple meters not doing much here initially. Full wall-off positioned over here, as you can see, Overcharge will be popped. Force fields available. I'm just going to be seeing those uh, mutants coming in towards the main base. Stalker's going to warp in again as we do see Bly being pushed back. So Bly not getting too much done here with this army. And the thing is, Harstam's army gets better and better as Bly loses some of his mutants. He really didn't do anything with them. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, the thing is, Harstam's army gets better and better. Some Phoenix on the way to help against the mutants. We see Storm on the way up, plus two. And this is still a very low tech composition out of Bly. So. Not the best of scenarios right here. As we go, I see these uh, meters coming down the right-hand side of the map. Storm is going to be finishing up. We're going to be seeing the plus two finishing up very soon as well. I'm just going to be seeing a few high templar being warped in. Also, we're getting some heavy FPS lag here. Don't know what's going on with that. Uh, don't know what's happening, so sorry about that, guys. Uh, but anyways, Bly is going to collect together towards the center. Parson can't actually take this forward fourth base because right now it is covered in creep spread. So that's going to be a little bit of an issue as we see a few more Bailings morphing on it. I 
This is gonna be seen here. Zergling's moving forwards. Balin's moving forwards as well. A couple of force fields go down. Zergling's gonna try and surround. We're gonna see a Sorkers blink and back, letting the rest of you do the tanking. Nice couple of force fields to the left side. We'll delay those Balin's a little while longer. As you can see here, Horstum shows us how to fight against this en masse swarm of units. A few Balin's in the back. Don't know how they got there. And actually, well, more mutants coming in. That's interesting. The mutants coming in now could actually change quite a lot, but more Stalkers reinforcing. There has been some Phoenix production. There's two up. And although it's only two, they will come in here and they will add on a little bit of extra damage. Halston actually comes out behind in supply after all of this. As those Phoenix continue to try and fight, he will get rid of the last few Ravagers as well. I think the thing is, though, these uh, Phoenix meters aren't going to do too much. I think there's enough Stalkers to keep fighting them back. Five more Stalkers warp in. Ooh. Halston types out GG. Hmm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it actually is completely GG. 